It's the Shatkin First Down Pregame Show, presented by Dr. Todd Shatkin and the Aesthetic Associate Center, with your hosts, Rich Gensler and Dr. Jared Shatkin, with special guest, Bill's alumni legend, Thurman Thomas. Now, from the Shatkin Sports Network Studios in Amherst, here are your hosts, Rich Gensler and Jared Shatkin. All right, welcome to the Shack and First Down Buffalo pregame show. Rich Gensler, Jared Shack, and the special holiday edition. We're going to talk about the Cowboy game. We're also going to get to the Charger game as well. Hall of Famer Thurman Thomas going to join us on the program too. And of course, we'll get the Mafia, the round table going as well. A dominating win for the Bills over the Dolphins that we'll get to as we get to. Wait, oh, whoa, hey, look. Oh, what? Dr. <laughs> Jared, are you there? Hey, Santa. Oh, 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 oh. I'm here to wish you all a Merry Christmas and to sing you my favorite Christmas carol. Da 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 da. I got a feeling Buffalo's going to the Super Bowl. Come on, sing with me. I got a feeling Buffalo's going to the Super Bowl. See you there. <laughs> Who knew Santa was a Bills fan? And I, I don't know about you, but I wasn't singing over Santa. No, me either. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a sore throat, too, so I yeah, don't want right to ruin everybody right on. on the airways. All right, time to talk about the Bills and the Cowboys. Let's go around the water cooler. Okay, this is what everybody was talking about after the huge Bills win over the Cowboys. Uh, last Sunday, and of course the Bills going on to take on the charge. We'll talk to them, talk about them in a little bit. But I don't feel like Jared that James Cook had the appropriate coming out party in the league, like he did in that game. You talk about the explosiveness he showed, and finally I felt that the Bills, in terms of play calling, used him for the exact reasons he was chosen where he was in the draft. Yep. Yeah, they used him like he was chosen to be a weapon in the pass, a weapon in the run. He was one of the only weapons in the pass. Um, but he just was so explosive, so elusive, um, getting a nose for the end zone, uh, running harder than I've ever seen James Cook run. And it was really something. It seemed like we had a superstar running back again. We had Thurman on the show earlier. Feels like that was the type of player that we had in the game uh, against the Cowboys. Crazy, 179 yards in the ground. And, and if you didn't see the stats, the stat line, the chunk plays were stupid. Mm -hmm. So run chunk plays, 12, 9, 20, 8, 8, 12, 10, 10, 7, do that math. That's nine plays, nine rushes of seven yards or better. Like that's a stat line you never see in the league anymore. Yeah, and it was not easy yards that he was getting. He was grinding out some yards and his vision was, it was the vision to me that was the best because you know, there seemed like there was always guys around him, but somehow we'd squeak out the other side. And he played a really nice game. I think he'd been playing like that kind of since Joe Brady started taking over this offense. And something else that was good to see was when he had that one drop, the team didn't give up on him like they did when he had that fumble in Denver. Instead, uh, you, you saw him smile a little bit because he's like, I know this is my guy. Joe Brady's got me. And um, he got to stay in the game, and he was a superstar that day. He really was, and we need to see that continuing. Um, drives in the game were incredible, and the first drive was a 15-play drive, and he felt like, if you're watching the game at, at Highmark or on television, you felt like just by the body language and the faces on the Cowboys that mm -hmm. that game was over after one drive of the game. I mean, they, they were not able to recover. Yeah, we took away their will really early in the game. I, the defense did not want to play with us. Um, I know I saw something with Dan Orlovsky earlier this week. We were just kind of pulling our tackle at their safety, number 14. Yeah, I don't think that guy wanted to play too much either throughout the whole game. And even Micah Parsons had a little, a little bit of a rough game too. Um, and I'm not saying Dallas is a bad team. I think the Bills just were ready to beat anybody that day. We were ready to kind of dominate the, the front line. And we had a plan and we stuck to it. And from start to finish, we dominated. And, and I mean, aside from the Cowboys' poor play on both sides of the ball, you know, they dug themselves their own grave with bad penalties, right? I mean, the roughing penalty on Josh, the hit on Shakir, uh, the, the Zach Martin play on Rap. I mean, they were they just killed themselves with their own penalties. So, and, and most of them, I would submit, were sort of unforced errors, right? Yeah, and also the punt. Um, sure, yeah. Sam Martin on the punt. Yeah, exactly. Early, in, it, it was third down, and we got the roughing the passer call really early, and 
Uh, throughout that whole game, it just seemed like every single time the Cowboys could get off the field, they ended up having a penalty that kind of killed them. It's crazy. So, yeah, if you were a Cowboys fan in that game, you really were pretty upset with the coaching, I think, one, and uh, definitely the discipline of the team. It's, it's crazy because you never would have thought with a Josh Allen stat line, 7 of 15, 94 yards, and, and yes, two touchdowns, one in the air and one on the ground. Yeah. But you usually, if you see that stat line, Bills lose, right, without seeing the game. Yeah, and then you even watch the game. It didn't seem like Josh played that badly, but then you look up and he's only had 94 passing yards. But it's just because we almost ran the same play over and over and over again. And, and Dan Quinn, the coordinator for Cowboys, just did not want to adjust. So why would we stop doing that? We kept pulling our tackles and we kept getting chunk plays on the run. And uh, James Cook is a huge reason why Josh Allen stayed clean the whole game. He didn't have any turnovers that game. And he was kind of able to have a, a bye week um, in the actual game. And, and look, I mean, it's not, not only James Cook, but I mean, Ty Johnson was mm -hmm. fantastic. I think he averaged something like nine yards a carry in that game. Yeah, he runs so hard, that yeah. guy. And uh, he reminds me a lot of Pacheco. I he's know. thick, he's quick. He, uh, you know, pursues yardage. He pursues tacklers and gets right through them on a, a lot of occasions. Yeah, no, and I think we probably signed Leonard Fournette with the idea that he was going to take over for Ty Johnson, but now this guy is really turning into a really nice backup for the team. All right, coming up next, a very special holiday guest for you. Bill's Hall of Fame running back Thurman Thomas will be on set with us when we return to the Shack and First Down Buffalo pregame show. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Shatkin here with Hall of Fame running back Thurman Thomas. My family and I have been coming to Dr. Shatkin's dental office for years. The office is beautiful and the staff is outstanding. Thanks Thurman, it's been an honor for me to take care of you and your family. For a Hall of Fame smile, go where the pros go. Dr. Todd Shatkin at the Aesthetic Associate Center. Call today for a free consultation, 839-1700. Growing up, we always celebrated Christmas. Lots of family, lots of food. I would say the best year ever was when we got our dog, Layla. She's now an 11-year-old golden doodle. So that's gotta be the best Christmas we've ever had. Here in Buffalo, we have a lot of family and friends, so I'm happy for everyone that supports me outside of the office, and I'm uh, especially grateful for everyone here and the team at Aesthetic Associates Center. From the Aesthetic Associates Center, we wish you a happy and healthy holiday season. Welcome back to the Check and First Down Buffalo pregame show, the holiday edition, joined by our good friend, Bills, and of course, Pro Football Hall of Famer 34, Thurman Thomas. Great to see you, man. Happy holidays. Same to you, same to you, man. What, what would it cost for you to wear something like this? A um, couple of screwball shots, and I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. And I'll join you while you're doing it. How's that sound? All right. Well, let me just take this off. And, no, I, just, I don't happen to have some screwball with me, but if I did. Um, oh, yeah. Great, great answer. That I'm was a, way I'm easier. A, than I I'm thought. a Buffalo fan, man. I'm, right. I'm here like the fans. I don't play anymore football, or anything like that. I'm here to watch the games and cheer on and do have whatever, fun. man, and have fun. I'm down with that. What's your favorite thing before we talk about the Bills and everything else? What's your favorite thing about Christmas? Uh, it's always about the family coming to town and getting together. But you know, this year uh, it's totally different because now we have fried grandkids coming to <sighs> to Christmas, and everybody's going to be at the house and. Uh, you know, and what better place? Obviously, we get snow during that time, but uh, yeah, it's always the family, man, that uh, that really comes together and to celebrate uh, one another and, you know, have fun, open gifts, and um, drink a little bit. All right, so let's fast forward to the Bills and, and your thoughts on this team that three, four weeks ago, everyone was like, oh my God, it <laughs> blow this thing up, <laughs> it's over. You know, and now, you know. <laughs> now they got us going to the Super Bowl. Right? It's a team it's, that it is, nobody wants to play right now. It's and, insane. And we haven't even made, we haven't even clinched the playoffs about right? there, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it didn't look good for this football team, yeah. to be honest with you. You know, injuries were kind of still mounting up, but we were getting a little, <clears throat> a little healthier. But, uh, but right now, you know, uh, you know, with a couple of these games coming up that I know that we can, that we will have a great opportunity to win against the Chargers and went um, following week against the Patriots. So two winnable football games, but I think the last two weeks have really put the Bills fans and the players back in that mode of concentrating on what could be at front, beating Kansas City and then beating Dallas. Uh, two good football teams, and uh, and we weren't playing as well, but 
we're playing well now, so uh, beware of the Buffalo Bills, baby. How excited are you and satisfied are you that the run game has <laughs> taken a whole new role <laughs> under Joe Brady with this offense? Oh, man, you know what? I'm, I'm very happy that, uh, that the new offensive co coordinator, Joe, really got the hands on it and see, like, we need to have somebody to help Josh and, you know, to see him have that game last week against the Cowboys. I mean, it's one of those deals where, you know, you're like, Okay, they're trying to run the ball, but will it be effective? And it was effective. And so now, as a, an opponent, you have something else that you have to prepare for because it's not just Josh Allen. I looked up a stat and I told someone today, I'm like, Steph Diggs has, I think he has 51 first down. Cook has 49. Wow, I never would have thought that. He has 49 and he's missed about two quarters because of a drop pass and a fall. That's right. Exactly. So he would probably have the most first downs on this football and say, had they not taken him out for, you know, a couple of quarters. So I'm telling you, I've liked the guy when he was at the University of Georgia. Uh, loved him watching him through the SEC. And, uh, and I know Devin Singletary was here last year. And, but the one thing that separated those guys, I saw Cook. I said, he can catch the football coming out of the backfield. He can line up in certain spots. And uh, I know it took him a while to get here, but we're here. And uh, we got another bona fide superstar on our football team that can take some of the pressure off a of job. For sure. What, what, what makes him so good in the run game? We've seen what he can do in the pass game, obviously, because he's just a mismatch for most defenders, right? Yeah. But in the run game, is it a combination of vision? Like, I watch him, and I just see him yeah. bounce. He'll get here, and he bounces. And he get here, and he bounces. Yeah. Is, are those some of the things that you see in him that make him so good? I, I, I see those exact things. And, and we talk briefly, like, every other week, you know. And, like, we've been talking a lot, like, after this game against the Cowboys. And, uh, you know, he said he's really starting to get comfortable being beside Josh and running – running to the left or running to the right because normally as a running back you want to be at least five or seven yards behind the line of scrimmage so uh but i think one of the things that uh like something is going a little bit on with the, the offensive line and their blocking scheme yeah. now. i mean it's really really come to life in the last couple of weeks and uh, so i think the scheme has gotten better uh maybe it's changed up a little bit from uh dorsey uh to joe right now but uh but you know what, when you have a game like that, the confidence goes down the line to those offensive line, knowing that, knowing that we can run the football like that. Obviously, you've been in a similar situation to this team in terms of it's December, you're in the playoff hunt. Like, what? how does your brain <laughs> change when you get to this part of the season? Well, it's do or die. Right. It's do or die. And to see what this team has been through from the beginning of the season when we had a 13-3 lead against Zach Wilson, against the Jets, uh, the 12 men on the field with the Denver Broncos and all the things that have happened between that, they've kept their composure. And even with the injuries that they've had, they've kept their composure all the way to the end. And uh, you know what? And I think you got to give uh, Sean McDermott a lot of credit because like a couple of weeks ago, he took like flat for whatever was said, you know, to the team meeting with the guys, but he's held this team together. I mean, and you see it. Um, I can't remember what game it was. I think it was after the Kansas City game or it might have been after the Dallas game when they told the coach, you know, we got your back. Yeah. We got your back. And when I heard that, I immediately texted him and said, the old guys got your back too. We got your back. So I think it's uh, confidence building, you know, not only with the coaches, the players, but the organization and also the fans too. So aside from being a, a grandpa and, and, and a fan, you got a bunch of other things going on. I got too much stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing this, for God's sake. Um, and we thank you for it. But talk a little bit about uh, the Choose Love wine. Yeah, I mean, it's a wine that my wife and I started, no, oh, not too long ago, maybe about seven, eight months ago. And, uh, and you know, the only reason, the reason that we're doing it is because, you know, a lot of the stuff that we do always relates to charity. And uh, uh, so if you bottle a bottle of Choose Wine Love, whether it's white or red, we're giving back to the uh, Buffalo Urban League. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a really good foundation for a, a number of years, and we're glad to be a part of that and uh, you know it's all about giving back to the community and uh, you know my wife did a mural uh, on the Choose Love back in when the uh, events happened at 514 at yep. the top down on Jefferson Street and you know the last two years everything that we really do kind of goes toward that uh, and then towards uh, the Buffalo Urban League and uh, but that's not the only one we do our foundation for SUNY Erie College to give scholarships uh, so, I mean, it's a lot of other different stuff that I can talk about, but the Choose Love wine is one that we really, because we're, we're a part of it, and, and, and we had the opportunity to go taste some wine, and, and, and uh, it was great. So, look, there's still time. 
If you need to provide some <laughs> holiday spirit for friends or family, choose Love Wine and give back yourselves. He's a guy that wears a ton of hats, and uh, we appreciate for him putting on the Shaq and First Down Buffalo pregame show hat and joining us in this very busy time. Happy holidays, man. Same Merry Christmas. You. Appreciate Great it. To see Thank you, brother. you so much. Thurman Thomas, Bills Hall of Famer. More of the Shaq and First Down pregame show coming up right after this. Family is the most important to us uh, above everything else. 34 Group is a general construction company. We had a part in rebuilding the community. We choose Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York because they are reliable. It's just great coverage and we have a great relationship with the folks at Highmark. We want our legacy to just be that we were good people that loved our community. <laughs> it is definitely a love affair, I can tell you that right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Shatkin, and happy holidays from all of us at the Aesthetic Associates Center. Hi, this is Steve Christie. When the Bills needed a clutch kicker, they called me. When I needed a dentist to care for my family, I called the best, Dr. Todd Shatkin from the Aesthetic Associates Center. Dr. Shatkin and his team have provided us with the care that we need. Are you embarrassed to smile because of loose dentures or missing teeth? You can be you again with Shackin Mini Dental Implants. Call Dr. Todd Shackin today at 716-839-1700 or go to drtshackin.com. Welcome to the Shackin First Down Buffalo pregame show. It's time to go in the pocket. All right, with our uh, Arena League MVP, Sam Castronova, and you're going to be playing for what team this coming year? Uh, the San Antonio Gunslingers of the Indoor Football League. And not very long from now, right? March 14th, we report. Okay. So first game's end of March. All right, so there's not much of a book on Easton Stick, my friend. Uh, and maybe we may, we might even see Will Greer in this game. Who knows? They just, uh, yeah, the Chargers yeah. just got him from the Patriots, if you didn't see this, off their practice web. Anyway, Easton Stick, what do we know about the kid from North Dakota State? Like you said, not a ton. I mean, I think he's, I think he's kind of sneaky athletic, kind of a good player, but they just don't have a lot going for him. Justin Herbert may, covered a lot of bad things in that offense, and if he was playing, I would be almost a little bit nervous. This would be kind of like a letdown game, but without him, uh, I'm not really sure how successful they're going to be. I'm looking for another dominant performance from the Bills defense and, uh, and maybe Easton makes some plays with his legs, but uh, it's going to be a rough go of it probably. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, we're going to see you in the round table. Get rid of that football. Welcome back to the Shack and First Down Buffalo pregame show. The Mafia is back at the round table. We've got, of course, Jared and Sam, who are regulars. Evan, and, of course, the legend, 2008 Buffalo Broadcast Hall of Famer, John DeShulo, WBBZ. Here he is. Very kind, very kind. Rich. You know, we go back to the Channel 7 days when I was there. You used to do a sports show with us that was on the station previously known as WNGS, which is now WBBZ. And you do a great job as a host. You, you're the glue that keeps us together with Jared Shatkin. What a great show. So many of these shows, you know, it's a lot of video. I'm just talking over the video. This is a personality-driven show, and you guys do a great job. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And coming for you, it means a lot. Um, so, okay, hot seat. You're up first. Sure. Um, what do you make of this really sort of sudden turnaround from this team? Well, you know, it through adversity comes good things sometimes. You know, what was that line that uh, Marv Levy used to say? When you're going through hell, just keep on going. I think that was really something profound because they have been going through hell with the losses, with the controversies on the team, with the players, uh, everything, you, know, you name it. And, uh, you know, Rich, we go back to some of the earlier days of the Bills, those adversities. I think the same thing happened this year has happened in those days. They just kept going, and I think you're going to see some good things as a result. Abbott, I'm going to go to you. What do you make of the uptick of this run game and the fact that Joe Brady stuck with it? He didn't fall to the T's of the pass. Yeah, so obviously we saw in Joe Brady's press conference after the win against the Cowboys, it wasn't like he was just going out there calling plays, kind of what Ken Dorsey was doing. He was actually calling the game as it was unfolding in front of him. He realized what was going on, and he realized that, hey, if I just keep calling some of the same run plays, even though they might be the same plays, they are working. Let's stick to that script and not let's not flip it. Kind of, it felt with Dorsey, 
we would have a little bit of a script that was working, but he wanted to get to his next set of plays, and he was just calling those plays instead of just calling the game. And that's what Brady was doing. He was calling the games. Yeah, and you bring up a great point because that is an incredible talent for an offensive coordinator to have to be able to adapt that quickly, to know what's happening play by play by play and not have sort of a script in front of you and go by that car that has down and distance. Sam, I mean, you obviously are a professional football player. You know what it's like having to deal as a quarterback with situations and obviously with a coach slash coordinator in conversing about play by play by play and how to do it right. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge difference. I've kind of had both ends of the stick. So when you have somebody that feels the game like that and you guys can almost be on the same page, you're in the headset saying, oh, what do you think about this? Oh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Boom, and you guys just get rolling as opposed to a coach calling a play and you know for a fact it's probably not going to work. It's 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 almost like demoralizing feeling. So the fact that they're rolling like this is, uh, is super encouraging for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think also, Jared, encouraging was the fact that I felt like they played with urgency, right? Mm -hmm. Too many teams, we, we, we talk about this team playing not to lose instead of to win. And I just saw, and I think all of you would agree, that they played with an incredible amount of urgency in that game. Yeah, I don't think there's ever kind of a part of that game where we were going to step off the gas, um, especially to open the second half and uh, get the ball back and score right away and be up 21 to three at half. And just, we could have kept putting it on them, to be honest. And uh, there is just never really a part of that game that felt like we, we didn't have it. You know, from the opening kickoff to the first drive, to the way we played defense on the first drive against Dak, you just kind of felt like domination was about to happen. And um, I've seen games like this throughout the year where the Bills have started like that and kind of let teams back in the game. But instead, against a great Cowboys team, we did not let them back in the game. We kept going and we put our hands on their throat and we never stopped. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, history, and I know Bills Mafia likes to lean on history a lot, right? So, John, if you go back not that far, earlier this season, there were times when this team played down to their opponents. So what do they do? They're a massive favorite going into this Charger game. What do they do to not let down, coming off a massive home win against arguably the best team in the league? What do they do to not let down on a short week going west? Well, you know, sports acumen and John DeShulo not necessarily <laughs> seeing the dictionary next to each other. But I will say, as in any life situation, you can't get cocky. They had a big win, like, you know, Dr. Jared Shacken just said, and you guys said, and that was great, but keep going. Don't get cocky. Let's go. Let's win. Let's, you know, go into L.A. and see what's happening now for the rest of the year. Yeah, one game at a time, guys. I mean, they always preach that, and that's what they, uh, what they have to do going into this game for sure. All right, let's get into the two-minute drill, everybody. As you know, with a two-minute drill, for those of you that are regulars to the program, we do a little trivia. So here we go. First question, here we go! Didn't work very well for Dak, but maybe it will for us. Okay, Air Coriel, I know you're familiar with Air oh, Coriel, sure. John. Sure. Air Coriel, 80s, Dan Fouts. I mean, Hall of Famers all over the place. Dan Fouts, Wes Chandler, John Jefferson, they called him JJ, Kellen Winslow, and what other wide receiver? He became a Bills wide receiver coach and is in the Hall of Fame. Wore number 18. Anybody know? Sam got it last time. I wasn't even born. I wasn't born. Don't look to me. I'm going to say Lou Saban. You know, what do I know? He was he a wide receiver, he was coach. wide receiver of yeah. the Bills? Was he a wide he was not a, he was a wide receiver. receiver. Coach. He was a wide receiver. Coach. What year was he a coach? He was a coach in the early 2000s. Yeah, no. All right. Yeah, we're not Taking way too long. Charlie Joyner, everybody. Uh, Charlie Joyner. Uh, was Never. part of Eric Coriel. Don Coriel was the coach. There's this outstanding high tech pass offense that looks a lot like what most offenses do now, right? Bonus question. This former Bill and Charger defensive end went to an Ivy League school. You know who I'm talking about? He's now a broadcaster. Oh, uh, Played, Marcellus Wiley. Marcellus Wiley went to Columbia. Well done. So a little holiday uh, trivia there for you. Before we go to the break, we got to get your selections for uh, the game. What's the score going to be? Evan, we'll go this way and start with you. We're going to go Bills 33, Chargers 13. Ooh, Chargers even get 13. What do you think, Sam? I'm going to go Bills 38, Chargers 10. 38, 10. And John, finally. 21. Three Bills. 21, three Bills. Okay. Like bills all around the table. We'll find out if the two of us agree. I think we probably do without giving it away in the next segment when we break down the Bills and the Chargers. Guys, thanks for being here. Happy holidays to you. Happy and uh, another edition of the, or another uh, segment rather, of the Shaq and First Down Buffalo pregame show comes up next. It means a lot to be able to work with my dad to continue this legacy that we have going on. 
I had many implants. Once I got them, it was like the old me came back. The changes you can make in such a short period of time in somebody's life, uh, have somebody in the chair crying because they finally have a full set of teeth. And I think the only way to do it in that type of time period for that type of price is really the mini implant. Mini dental implants can change your life too. Call us at 839-1700 for a free consultation. My self-esteem wasn't where it should have been because I was really, really self-conscious about my teeth. When I walked into Shack and Dental, I was instantly ready for the residency program. I knew that that is what I needed. I needed the discount. I needed the dentist that was going to fix everything. My self-esteem is already getting much, much, much higher just from starting the procedures. Call Shatkin Dental Health today at 43 Smile for quality dental care you can afford. All right, welcome back to the Shack and First Town Buffalo pregame show talking about the Bills and the Chargers. Uh, I mean, it's not much to say about this game. They go in, uh, last check, 13 and a half point favorites on the road. What was the, it was similar to that, was it the Commanders game where, where the spread was like that earlier in the year? Yeah. Well, one of the games earlier in the year, it was, it was high double digits that the Bills were road favorites for. I, I, might, I think it was the Washington game. Anyway, yeah. but here they go into this game. Obviously, the Chargers fire their coach. They fire their GM. Their quarterback's hurt. Their best wide receiver's probably hurt. Eckler hasn't been not even a shadow of himself. Uh, this team has virtually nothing offensively. They've given up 40, 44 sacks. They're going against the best press team in the league in terms of pressure up front. And really the only guy you can talk about in the Chargers at this point is Mac, uh, obviously UB guy. But other than that, Jared, there's not a whole lot to talk about in this game. No, we're looking at a pretty bad team. Uh, they were not too bad with Justin Herbert in, at the helm because he's, a, he's an awesome quarterback. But now that they have Easton Stick, uh, I think that the Bills are looking pretty good in this game. I don't believe, you know, there's a lot of talk and has been all week long about, you know, well, there's an interim coach, so they're going to play harder for him. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that beats the Bills this weekend. No, they just lost to a Raiders team that was starting Aiden O'Connell with an interim coach that the Bills already beat 38-10. to 10. So if you really look back at that, they, they lost to a bad team 62-21. to 21. Uh, So I'm pretty confident in the Bills going into this one. And, you know, like we talked about in the roundtable, the Bills can't have a letdown in this game. They cannot, we, they cannot yeah. afford to play down to the Chargers. I don't think they will. I don't think we will. Yeah, I think we're in playoff mode now. The way we've been playing the last couple weeks, I think this team is not going to allow a letdown. These Cavs Captains aren't going to allow a letdown. They're going to play for Sean McDermott, and I really see them winning by a lot. Let's get your pick. I think we're going to win, and I told you big, and guess how big. <laughs> I'm going to say we're going to shut them out, and it's going to be 38 to 9. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I don't have – I'm not even close to that differential, but I have a big score for the Bills, too. I like them winning 42-13. Got to thank Dr. Todd Shack and Aesthetic Associates, Shack and Dental as well. But oh, hold on one second. So, from all of us, our friends, our family, of course, Bill's Mafia, the crew here on the Shack and First Down Buffalo pregame show, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and go Bills. Thanks for watching. Have a great holiday weekend. Go Bills! Go Bills! Go Bills. In the Pocket is sponsored by Mini Dumpster Rental. Call 716-429-6362. This has been a production of the Shatkin Sports Network.